Good evening, good afternoon, good morning for those of you who are joining us in the world today for another episode of Handy Punditry. Uh, this one called Quality Food. We are excited to feature three female food entrepreneurs from Atlanta who are talk to us today about uh, some plant based options and plant based business. Uh, we are doing this for uh, back this January and um, there's a lot of people in the world that have taken the pledge for veganary. Uh, we at Pandemic Monday ourselves are promoting something called Mindful Mondays, which is in our part of the world in South and Southeast Asia. You pick one day of the week and focus on mindful consumption, which includes um, you know what you put in your body. Uh, and if that's the case, we would like to sort of show you options for people who might not want to do all the cooking themselves, but want to take uh, the available services of food entrepreneurs, such as Street Ladies today. So we have Nali Dandenia, Sulo from the Pandy Pani, I hope I said your last name right, and Sabrina Dean with us. Uh, welcome to Pandemic Pantry, everybody. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Levin, for having us. No problem. It's a pleasure. So the one disadvantage we're going to have today is that we can see all this fabulous food that you're going to be making for us and, and showcasing maybe and talking about, but none of us can actually uh, try that because we're all virtual thanks to COVID-19. So, um, so I'm going to I'm going to obviously eat with my eyes uh, and uh, and uh, enjoy the, this uh, great feast that you're going to show, show and, and talk you about. You're on so, a seafood diet. You're on yeah, a seafood this is what diet. we call a seafood <laughs> diet. There we go. <laughs> a great way to lose weight. So, um, all right. So, uh, um, just you know, just want to sort of um, understand a little bit about your individual stories, and maybe Dinali, you can go first. Um, you know what? I know you're the the, the co co owner co founder of um, Cafe Kumbuk, which is a sort of a very hip uh, cafe in in Colombo. Um, I used to patronize it uh, with the family when I was living there. But um, I, I know there's you know in addition to sort of um, you know the traditional fo food that's um, you know maybe seafood and others, you have a lot of vegan and vegetarian options available. Um, so what inspired you to start this sort of very hip uh, sort of cafe with a very healthy twist. What was your inspiration for that? Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, um, Lavendra, we moved back, well, we moved to Sri Lanka about seven years ago, um, my husband and I and my youngest daughter, and left my elder daughter in the UK, who was just finishing off her, um, her, her university degree. And um, it part of her dissertation was uh, to brand a coffee shop that was that was the ultimate she was doing creative advertising and she actually had to create a booklet and brand a, a coffee shop um, so she did that and then having graduated she also decided that she'd been away from us from long enough um, and she said she wanted to bring her cafe to life so essentially it's a dissertation um, that we have taken and and brought to life which is um, you know an amazing feet to do. Um, but when we moved here seven years ago, um, we it was clear that there was a big gap in the market uh, for food. We weren't really looking to start anything. It was our own needs really to see what was around us and how we can eat healthy and what options there were. Um, and then with Shana graduating and her dissertation and everything, it just came naturally, you know, hey, we should do this. Um, and Shana, you know, said to me, would would I do this with her? And that's really how Cafe Kumbuk has come about. Wonderful. Um, Suro, you want to uh, just talk a little bit about um, your, your story and how you've, uh, and tell us a little bit about your business as well and what inspired you to, to start it as well. Right. So uh, my story is where um, my husband is vegan. And uh, when I met him uh, almost nine years back, um, I had no idea what veganism was. I knew what vegetarian was, but then I had no clue about what vegan is. And uh, he was the one who introduced me to this concept. And uh, how it came about was we were at a cafe and then I was nicely going and eating my slice of cake. And he was like, I haven't had cake in about four or five years. Because by the time I met him, he, had, he was vegan uh, at that time for about four years. And he has been vegetarian almost all his life. Um, 
so that made me uh, want to bake something for him. And then for his birthday, I uh, surprised him with a little chocolate cake. And then uh, that was how people and people started enjoying the cake. So then people were like, "Why don't you start doing this and selling this?" And uh, in 2016. Um, after we got married, we decided to start this as a home-based baking uh, business with alongside my normal uh, nine-to-five job, and um, we started this off. It went quite well, and then this year um, in June, we were actually planning to start it in uh, last year, uh, but then because of the uh, the bombings, the Easter attack and all, we thought, okay, that's not the right time. And then we were planning to start in March. So uh, we have a small place and we were like trying to set everything up and then uh, the virus, everything uh, broke out and we were able to uh, stick to our plans. But then in June, uh, once uh, the lockdown was uh, lifted and everything was relaxed, we thought, okay, we will just uh, start a start and go ahead with this and uh, yeah so since june we started this and uh, we have taken our little home based business a little bit um, uh, to the next level yeah. can't call it like a lovely little cafe because we are still building on it uh, yeah. but yeah that's our story so in in your current um, iteration of your business um so you're 100% plant-based or vegan food uh, company, yes. um, mostly yes. catering or delivery or um, people order yes. online? So, and- yeah, at the moment, we encourage people to uh, pre-order, but we are available on Uber and uh, we have our menu going on as well. And... Um, we, are, we do catering uh, for a maximum of about 40 packs. We don't go beyond that. Okay. And, um, yeah, so uh, we are a bit of everything. So uh, depends on what the customer needs. Um, we try to specialize. And also, we are 100% vegan. We only sell vegan food. Wonderful. We make our own mock meat. We make our own uh, cheese using coconut. And um, we make uh, most of our uh, uh, items, the sauces, everything uh, is uh, homemade. Uh, but then, yes, there are a few uh, easily available products uh, in the market as well, which we use. Uh, mm-hmm. But we try to make everything at home. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, Sabira, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Wonderful to have you on the show. Um, uh, I, I see the you know a, a, a very very interesting food in front of me. But before we actually uh, showcase that with you next, but um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your story and and how you started this business and, and tell us a little bit about you know the name of the business. We'll put we'll put some links up for everybody so they, they can go to them. But um, just tell us a little bit about you know what motivated you to do this uh, plant based uh, uh, venture and you know, is there a personal story there? Love to hear hear the genesis of this idea. Um, I actually I started off as a granola business on a, on a wager with my husband. That's why we we named our crunchy granola, and um, but he encouraged me to go on and uh, you know to to start selling it. And my friends and my family came together, and you know they were encouraging me. Then um, last. Uh, <laughs> December we had a sale actually that was um, hosted by um, Expo Sri Lanka and they had a Christmas bazaar sort of thing, holiday bazaar it was called. And um, so I had my first sale there and we were planning to have six more sales. Actually we had enrolled but then again COVID came and um, well from granola we went on to granola bars and then nut milks. And uh, since I had all this stock at home, I started uh, experimenting with the milk and getting on to vegan cheeses. And then I was introduced to the vegan market in Sri Lanka. Okay. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people came and told me that, you know, they had to import cheeses and the meats and whatever. 
So, um, so we started that we developed from there. And uh, well, we are one year old. And uh, now we have about 150 products on our bed. Wow. Well, the, That's the, we have a website called uh, powercrunch.lk. Right. And everything is available on that. And um, milks and uh, stuff like that, we do to order so that we don't add any preservatives. And we, we are proud that we have a short shelf life so that, you know, the customer knows that our products are uh, natural. Natural, and it's also, um, you know, freshly made. Freshly made, and and everything you also sell is one hundred percent plant based, vegan. Uh, well, I do okay, some vegetarian. cater to uh, to keto customers as well. Oh, okay, okay. So I mean, I have uh, like I have a brand of crackers called Flaxies, which are vegan keto. So I have you know that that. Uh, I mean, I do for keto as well, but my cheeses and my milk-based stuff is all vegan. Okay, wonderful. Good to know. And I have like mixers because I, for me, the whole point is, you know, you should have versatility in your in your cooking because Sri Lanka, you know, we don't really have much, um, you know, variety for the vegans. Right. So, like, yeah. I have uh, mixers that can be turned into a soup or used as a dip or even right. my um, my corn dog mix which i'll be showing today has the you can make the cornbread or this so the same products can be interchanged to okay. to st make stuff of different cuisine and different dishes wonderful Katika, and, i'm sure i'm sure i'm monopolizing the questions i'm sure you've got us uh, <laughs> why don't why did you why did you take over Thanks. Um, actually, my question is, uh, uh, we start with Denali because then I think um, it's uh, just kind of goes in a loop. Uh, so when you first started Denali, I think it was kind of a virgin market, right? Especially for like vegan food and, you know, real like healthy food. How were you able to sort of, you know, capture the audience and be able to build the name that you have today? It's almost like a cult following now, right, for your cafe. Um, yeah, I mean, good question. Um, when we started, you're right, there, there really wasn't very much going on uh, here in Colombo. There were um, a couple of coffee brands, you know, uh, Barista and places like that doing um, sort of coffee. But when we started out, we were pretty much the first, uh, certainly on important place. <laughs> there was nothing back then. Um, and then within, you know, a couple of years, um, actually within, within a year, we were copied and, you know, there were so many people following what we're doing and, and looking at it. Um, the branding and the following is, is predominantly down to my daughter, um, who, you know, has used her skills wisely to market and brand us and, and to get us out there. But I think it's also the values that we stand for, because it's not just about veganism. It, it You know, we sort of paved the way for uh, teaching people about, you know, ethical values, about sustainability, about using locally sourced ingredients, seasonal ingredients, all of these things um, were quite new when we started started out to many people um, and I think we've you know progressed it along the way um, and it is what it is today because of those values I'd say yeah all right fantastic um, uh, so um, I know when uh, I, I remember ordering a pie I think Larry and I smashed it like back when you first started <laughs> we ordered a pie from you you probably don't even remember it um, no I can't so remember it was I think the chocolate pie and uh, apple pie right Yes, that's correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, um, and now you sort of progress to having your own little cafe. Uh, are you finding it easier because of trendsetters like Cafe Kumbuk to kind of go into the market and say, look, you know, you have a ready audience for your, you know, cuisine? Or are you still finding it like an uphill battle to convince people about, the, uh, you know, plant based food? Um, yeah, there are. Uh, Thanks to places like Cafe Kumbu, people know that there are vegan options. And uh, nowadays, we see a lot of uh, cafes, even the high end cafes, uh, five star hotels, uh, coming up with vegan menus. And uh, more and more uh, people are interested in uh, not mainly vegan, maybe, but even uh, looking into plant based uh, food options. 
uh, people may tend to be a little bit not aware about this at the moment in Sri Lanka, but the crowd who is adopting this uh, lifestyle and the crowd who is actually uh, uh, wanting to uh, not just to uh, become a vegan, but also looking for several other different options, because everyone knows that, okay, um, when you are trying to eat a plant-based meal, it is definitely much more healthier. Um, but like if you take my menu, you don't see many healthy food in my menu uh, because it's all mostly uh, the junk side of uh, the vegan food which I try to offer because we see a lot of uh, places which offer a lot of healthy vegan food options like smoothie bowls to um, all kinds of lovely salads and things like that. So what I try to do is uh, to show people that um, eating a plant-based meal uh, is not just eating a salad. It's beyond that. And uh, there is a, uh, a huge following and it's not difficult to market our products now uh, because people are much more aware. And um, it has become a little bit easier, actually. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Uh, Lavi, do you have a question for me? I, I was just acknowledging the fact that that's really good news. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sabi, um, yes. how, when you... Uh, so we've talked about people who already are aware of the plant-based you know cuisine and diet and that that can be tasty too but how would you go about convincing someone who is a hardcore like meat eater or a red meat eater to come and say here i want you to try this plant-based cheese or corn well, dog i i actually am living that because my husband is not a vegan and he wants his meat so I mean, whenever I try something like the chili con carne or something, he's my guinea pig, as it were, you know. So <laughs> once I get his approval, then I know it's, you know, it is, um, you know, it it's tasty. That is my whole point. My, my, my slogan is making healthy food tasty. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm trying to produce things like chili con carne or, cheeses and all that kind of thing that are traditionally non-vegan but allowing you know giving the this vegans out there the same kind of taste so like you know we now veggie meats which is my meat range we have different you know like bacon bits uh, which are made out of coconut and you know things like that and i try to give them a variety because uh, i think like sulo said that you know there's a lot of you know vegetables out there you know salad bowls and all that and yes those are tasty but i think sometimes they just kind of want something like maybe a pasta bolognese or something like that you know with that that kind of meaty feel in it especially the new new vegans yes so i'm trying to give them the you know the the home cooked goodness in a way that they can have enjoy it I, I mean, I, uh, been, I've been vegan for four years now, and, and I think uh, <laughs> people who know me or used to know me are quite shocked that I've I've made the switch. I would be, I would, yeah. You included. Remember <laughs> what I used to be? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like so, this time yeah. during Christmas, I got a lot of people asking me if I do cake. So I actually did a vegan rich cake, a Christmas cake. Right. And, uh, you know, now that has kind of taken up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's funny because you know um, the, I think you all of you are onto a um, interesting sort of niche there, which is that uh, when you do initially become a vegan, you do miss these um, comfort foods as they're called, I guess, right? Yeah. The spaghetti bolognese or the hamburgers and the hot dogs and things like that. Uh, and and yes, a cafe kombucha, great salads and everything else is really good because you also crave a really good salad which I, I found in Sri Lanka was one of those hard things to find is a good place that made healthy salads and, and light affair, I guess, than, than the usual heavy stuff. I just want to ask anybody who wants to sort of opine a general question, which is uh, some, in an observation that I've sort of uh, seen, uh, you know, after I sort of moved back to Sri Lanka myself, is that um, the quantum of meat that Sri Lankans eat uh, across all sort of ethnic religious uh, groups uh, is quite substantial in comparison to maybe 
other parts of the world. And I think lots of my Indian friends, um, are, when they visit Sri Lanka, are under the mistaken impression that, you know, because it's a predominantly Buddhist country, that everybody will be vegetarian. And they're shocked at the number of meat eaters in the country and the lack of vegetarian options, period. And actually, if you go to most restaurants in Sri Lanka and you look at the vegetarian options, because I'm forced to do that now looking for vegan options, um, you know, it's still a very small quantum. And in India, at least 50% of the menu is vegetarian because of the, the number of people who are vegetarian here. So um, <clears throat> there is an interesting sort of a, a challenge for you. And I'm wondering how you've sort of managed to, and are you, are you seeing that sort of coming down? Maybe people are a little bit more conscious of their health and the impact on the planet or whatever else, and are looking for more uh, plant-based options? Or do you still see that... Uh, you know, with rising affluence, people are consuming more meat. What What are your personal impressions of that trend? I kind of find that vegans, the number of vegans are increasing. Okay. At least I, in the sense that I'm new to the vegan scene. In right. That, you know, but somebody told me there are 55,000 vegans in Sri Lanka. Huh. I don't know how far that is true. But, you know, the thing is, my point is, you know, because anyway, my um, we try to you know reuse and uh, recycle. So I've also like my jars, everything uh, my granola from my granola to my uh, my sauces, pasta sauces, and all that are, are coming glass jars. And I do encourage like a buyback system. Okay, great. So because I think because lately within maybe the last year or so, I found people are more. Towards uh, conservation, I, I don't know about this. Yeah, it's a good trend. I mean, it's a global trend, right? So yes, I mean, it's good to see that it's making some kind of an impression in, in Sri Lanka. So good, good. Yeah, uh, and I know that for a fact that Cafe Kramuk uses uh, the sustainable straw. Oh yes, yeah. uh, the first place I saw so, uh, way yeah. way before that became a big deal in the West, actually. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, Lavi, before you are uh, uh, speaking of salads at Cafe Kramuk, they're also well known for their vegan chocolate cake. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and also, they are lovely uh, Polish burger. Uh, yeah. Yes, and the Polish burger. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. We had uh, somebody here um, on the show um, last year who imports the Poloso Jiang jackfruit from Sri Lanka. They partly process it, and they are now a, a three and a half million dollar funded startup in Singapore that makes uh, pulled pork out of. Um, out of the jackfruit and you know there are major it's companies called eat karana and we had the ceo and co-founder on on our show and he was talking about how a, instead of sourcing from india and other parts of the world he actually sourced from sri lanka because sri lankans know exactly when to pluck a young jackfruit because of the polos right our tradition of of that so um so you know lots of indians on the show were asking him why he's not sourcing it from india and he said well the sri lankans know jackfruit better and the quality is always high so that was their answer. <clears throat> anyway, I digress. Kathika, you think uh, we should start um, with um, Sabira sort of uh, showing us some stuff that she's, I, I, I can see a lot of stuff in the background. So I was wondering whether we should. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> we elevating, so let's Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and while she's maybe preparing stuff, I mean, we, I think we, we could always ask a so question. While you're preparing we... stuff, we can kind of chat to like Denali yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. So sure. if you want to let us know what you're sort of going to, you know, show us or demonstrate, uh, and then, you know, then we, as you're sort of doing stuff, we can either ask you questions or ask each other questions. So, uh, so uh, what are you going to show us today, Sabira? Uh, well, I, um, I chose one of my vegan meats, which is the hot dog. Okay. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd show you different ways of doing it, like making the basic hot dog and the different fillings, like the corn dog, the cheesy dog the um and um and um the mustard honey mustard again honey using coconut fiber. okay great. so it's h-u-n-n-y not wow. H -U -N -N -Y. <laughs> <laughs> so uh then also we go on to the the next uh, one would be the corn dogs again with the different uh, sauces that you can use uh for that and the third one is kind of a fusion uh, thing, like an Italian and a Sri Lankan kind of uh, option for the same uh, product. Okay. So it's basically three recipes, but with nine variations. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Great. So uh, if you want to start uh, doing your thing, yeah, we'll, 
<laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll sort of chat with each other a little bit while you're there. Uh, and, uh, and Sulo, you've, you've done some stuff as well, right? You're going to uh, share? Yes. So what is on the menu? I'll be doing a, a burger. Uh, it's going to be a quick an easy quick fix burger a weekday when you have less than say half an hour to make something nice uh, and also i'll be using uh, mainly uh, the vegetables which you can easily find in your kitchen and uh, maybe the only thing which you might not be able to find is uh, the tofu um, so i'm using that um, and making a burger and a very easy uh, salad um, oh. Again, this is uh, because both of them will go together and it will be very filling. Um, yeah, so that's what I'll be doing today. And Dinali, you can regale us with uh, with menu items on your on Cafe Kumbuk and get us some. Maybe we can uh, we can uh, highlight Sabira and Sabira. You can tell us what you're doing right now. I saw some oil going there and something else. Uh, and. Uh... A vegan butter with a, a little oil, and I'm going to be using vegan butter. Is that what you said? Okay, great. Yeah, vegan butter with a little oil. Okay. And uh, um, she's using her own sausage range, vegan sausage oh, range. Wow. Okay, wow, that looks really good. Yeah, that looks pretty cool, are we? <laughs> 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 and I haven't had my dinner yet. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> there should be some kind of. Uh, 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 you know, hardship pay for us on this one, Katha. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Um, so, did I, um, with the stuff yeah. that you do in Cafe Kumbuk, right? If, if I mean, obviously, Lavi and I are pretty passionate about introducing this mindful Monday concept uh, so yeah. that people can do like a flexitarian diet at least one day of the week. I mean, yes. how open are you guys with your menus in terms of having like a vegan only menu at least once a week or something to cater to such a such a demand so that people who are meat eaters can also still benefit from the health benefits of being plant based at least one day of the week? Um, I'd, I'd say we're pretty flexible. Um, certainly our, our audience and our database of customers, um, we know pretty much what the demands are. And every time we remove a recipe or um, we take it away, we get lots of, oh God, bring that back. And then we introduce something else and then, no, don't, we're okay, we love this one. So it is, we've now got an audience that's flexible enough, I, I feel, to try our changes um you know we are encouraging a lot more vegan food um we're not a totally vegan uh, establishment we never have been we right. actually never used to serve red meats at all when we first started out but then later on once we moved you know we had customers asking for certain you know products and and meat types as well but we do have a huge vegan following and to go back to Lavi's question earlier, um, it really has grown, you know, significantly. I feel in in Colombo alone, um, and you know, I can see even across the country as you travel and go places, the vegan options are definitely there on the menus as well now. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so back to Sabira a little bit. So you're putting different relishes on top, or? So I Sorry, see you Samira, uh, your audio wasn't too clear. What was the relish? Sorry, this is uh, the chili con. Chili con, okay. Okay. So this is vegan chili. Okay. And so that you can take a look at it. So can I ask what the base product is, um, Sabi? I'm just curious now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, TVP. Okay. okay. Sorry, okay. Yeah. So then this... This uh, next one is my cheesy sauce. They're all in jars. So. This one is a uh, nut free option. Okay. So this is, it can be used as actually as a soup as well as a, a dip or a fondue. It's superb at the fondue. So that's the cheesy dog. And again, for the texture. This is what it looks like. And then well, Sabi, you have some really fancy camera work going on in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know who the who we need yeah. to uh, thank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
to have connections. So that, that that's uh, that's uh, the white sauce as well. <laughs> The honey mustard, so, I think. Honey mustard. Okay, sorry, thing. So that is a honey mustard. So that would be the um, the hot dogs. Okay. And so, and so, if somebody wants to put ketchup, obviously they can. You, you no. just, yeah, no. obviously whatever else you want to put on your on your dog is is completely acceptable. <laughs> Depending on you know what part of the world you're from, you'll have different accrued demands that you probably put on it. Great. So the next one is this corn dog mix that you make it according to the directions okay. and you make it batter. Okay. And then uh, you stick the the con the, the stick for the, the dog. Yeah, the, the sausage yeah. into the yeah. Into the stick, and then you dip it and you deep fry it, and then it kind of looks like that. Um, okay. nice. And then that one you can uh, you can serve it with the cheese sauce, obviously. Right, and ketchup and whatever else you want. Yeah. So, um, so the and hot dogs obviously are sort of already pre-made. Sorry, sorry. So, so yeah. the hot dogs are already pre-made. All you have to do is heat it up uh, yes. in the pan. Uh, the corn dogs require a little bit of preparation, so there's we some cooking element to it. Just have to dip it into that again. The the, the instructions are clear in that. You just have okay. to add the water and beat it and leave it now. And then uh, for the marinara again, uh, I mean you can serve it with marinara sauce or the cheese or again mustard or whatever so it kind of gets into that and that's the okay. way you serve that one. okay wonderful also for the for the um for the um, corn dogs the sorry the chili dogs this is my vegan uh, this is my processed cheese okay so it can be grated and then you oh, can okay. with the, the cheese Okay. And then the final uh, one that I want to show is um, well, in that one you can use any of the any of the meats. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, you. That's a little more work. I mean, for if you want a kind of a fancy kind of thing, right. uh, you make it like um, say a sini sample. You chop the onions. Right. And then these would be the ingredients like a normal sini sample. Right. And then you can serve it with roast pang or sambal. This is the finished product. Like you just chop up the thing, fry it a little with onions like this. Oh, I see this. So the, you put the sausage in the sini sambal to make a hybrid yeah. sort of fusion thing you're talking about. Okay. You can put the sausages and then serve it with that. And then sambal. Love it. I just... No, you're you know, really like, making I me hungry. Your, this is I, can color, I can see your I'm you. hungry as well. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, especially that roast pan. Now that's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> well done, well done. Wow. That's really good, Sabira. And then so, the final one would be, again, you like to see in some boy, but you use the, the spice. Okay. The thing, and then you put... Either your marinara or your uh, the the chili con carne. Right. Yeah, I'm putting both because since both are open. Right. Uh, that should make it a little saucy, and then you can uh, serve it with pasta. Okay. All right. That that I can see that happening. Okay. So th th these are sort of a, a mock meat a granules, is it? Uh, in there. Yes, that is okay. the extracted uh, vegetable protein. Okay. So Give Yeah. And then this on top. And then I will top that with my um the yeah, grated the cheese, grated cheese. Larry, the chef in you is coming out. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the food in me is <laughs> this is uh how you would serve it. No, it looks, yeah, so you like the parmesan. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. This, this huh? uh, well, it sure looks good. <laughs> I can't tell because I have eaten it yet, but it does look really good. <laughs> Thank you, Sabira. That, that's really nice. Sulo, you have some uh, some stuff to show us as well? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. Uh, so I'll be uh, focusing on a little burger. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. 
So, uh, what I did was I have already uh, done a little bit of cooking because yeah. I be having too much of time otherwise. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think you can see. I can see the burger bun. Yes, for sure. And yeah. I, yeah. I so, see. I have done the. Uh, I have done the uh, the tofu. I don't know if y'all can see. Um, I can see the bun. I think everybody can see the bun right now. And they, I think there is something on the side there. Okay, all right. Yes. Okay. That's the tofu that goes in the bun. Is that what That's you have? That's the tofu. Okay. So uh, I have the tofu here. So what I did was basically I uh, cut the tofu and I marinated it in a little bit of soy sauce. Okay. Um, and the key to my... Uh, uh, cooking is mainly using a lot of spices. Um, so I oh. use a lot of homemade spices. My main spices which I uh, use are the normal curry powder, uh, the um, the chili powder and everything, uh, which is all homemade. Uh, so for my tofu, what I did was I first marinated it with soy sauce uh, and there is an oyster mushroom uh, oyster sauce. Yeah. So it's not oyster sauce, it's a it's mushroom easy. sauce. Uh, it's available easily in the supermarkets. I don't know if I can show the brand, but uh, yeah, it's something like this. Yep, um, I so I use that and uh, I just tried the uh, tofu so you can get a tofu bit like this, right? Okay. And the same thing, I did some mushrooms. So what I did for the mushrooms was uh, I just um, fried it with some... Um, Tofu again, uh, sorry, uh, with some soya sauce, and uh, I added something called liquid smoke. So what happens oh, yeah. is that it gives a smoky flavor, especially when you want that uh, meaty flavor. We were talking about it earlier, where people would want to opt for those uh, meaty flavors. So uh, it is not easily available in Sri Lanka, but there are certain places which brings down uh, this liquid smoke. So you can get it from there. So my main thing is those two plus. Uh, I have some uh, brinjals, which I uh, sliced it very thinly. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just, uh, again, uh, grilled it. Again, using a little bit of uh, liquid smoke. Again, it gives a smoky flavor. And also, it gives that bacony uh, crisp into it. If you, and also, you need to add a little bit of salt. So you get that salty, crispy, and uh, smoky flavor coming in. But again, this is just uh, vegetables, right? Um, so, apart from that, I am just uh, layering it. And, and the, um, so, now uh, I'm just layering it. Uh, so, I have a salad uh, with some tofu slices going in. Uh, the mushrooms will give that... Uh, and the mushroom uh, is oyster mushroom, it looks like? Oyster mushrooms okay. for that uh, meaty flavor. Okay. And... Uh, also, I'm topping it off with these uh, brinjals. Again, the brinjals will give it a little bit of a meaty texture, but uh, we shouldn't be deep frying it. It should either be shallow fried or grilled. Okay. Right. Right. Great. And then, and there the are so group. many. Yeah. Sauce. And also, like we have uh, mayonnaise and all, which can be easily taken in from the off the shelf from the supermarket. Um, so and I then, tend to use uh, yeah. mayonnaise. This is a mayonnaise, yeah. and I'm just uh, using a little bit of sweet chili sauce as well. And uh, I also like uh, honey mustard. But this is again; these are all the brands which are just available in the supermarkets. But without without honey, right? So it's just maybe again, sugar. All, no, it's it's uh, it's again. Like what Sabina said earlier, it is coconut shaker, which has been used. Oh, okay, great. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wow, that looks like a really juicy burger. And uh, <laughs> so this is the burger. Wow. Oh, wow. It's amazing. That looks really so good. This, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, there are a lot of people who do not like uh, tomatoes, uh, but... Uh, there are a few tomatoes which are available in some of the supermarkets, the beef tomato, uh, mm -hmm. which tends to be a little bit nice and meaty on burgers, which is a little big. Beef so bread, yeah. it would be nice if you can have add a slice of that as well in your burgers. And uh, for the salad, again, um, 
it is a simple salad with uh, car carrots cabbage and i used a little bit of uh, uh, fresh uh, oregano and some uh, nuts uh, now here again uh, for the dressing i will be using a little bit of um, the mustard and i'm curious uh, uh, slow this mustard also, this honey uh, mustard for and for honey mustard is that a local yeah. manufactured product with trickle sorry this uh, actually this is uh, Mass hot product. mustard it is a locally ma uh, manufactured Mass, one okay. they Mass. also have uh, for, the, for the same thing what i do is i add uh, the, the the coconut treacle so then i get the sweetness coming in i see okay this is available as hot mustard this is a local product yes. okay okay and then you they have, have a thing. range of products okay great but Ma Ma has is yeah mars is good good stuff yeah. correct yeah uh and uh, Uh, there is vinegar in the mustard, so I'm not going to add any more vinegar. Uh, but I'm going to be adding a little bit of uh, pepper, a little bit of salt, and um, I'll also be adding some uh, roughly grounded uh, coriander and cumin. Okay. Uh, it's just to give that little uh, flavor coming in. and then just uh, mix everything together and uh, yeah so you have a nice crunchy salad uh, to go along with the burger wonderful it's a quick question the the, the mayonnaise i assume um, that both people used are is again vegan uh, edi I, i'll just share the name so edinburgh has a uh, vegan oh, yeah. mayonnaise okay oh, yeah it's freely available so edinburgh's uh, Mayonnaise, as well as the Thousand Island. I have not used the Thousand Island, but uh, the Thousand Island is also uh, vegan. So they primarily use soya bean oil uh, as their base, uh, and there is no eggs uh, in the mayo. So and, and milk. that is the go-to vegan mayo, which is freely available in the market. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. It's actually yeah. hard to find a vegan mayonnaise in India unless you make it yourself. Uh, most and, of the and this uh, vegan mayo is quite nice and it's cheap as well. It's cheap as well. Okay. okay. Is that what you said? It's cheap. Yeah, easier. and uh, it's easier. Like this, uh, what I showed now is like one of those quick uh, ones. Uh, so only thing is, you might need to get the mushrooms and the tofu from the shop, and then you are good to go. <laughs> So, so Dinali, uh, so your jackfruit burger, right? The, so yeah, I wanted to ask a question about that. Okay, so no, 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 go, no, go for it. No, 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 go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay, so that that you you use the young jackfruit, right? And do you yes. make it in a particular way? I mean, do you because a lot of the jackfruit burgers in in the West, uh, you know, they take the cans, which are usually from Sri Lanka, and then no, we they, do it from fresh. You do it from fresh. So it how, is from fresh. a trade secret that you can share with us how no, you do not at all i mean we um i remember a couple of years ago hello fresh the owner of hello fresh came and actually videoed us making it as well um because it is it's become extremely hip and trendy but trend aside it is a genuine fruit stroke vegetable that um can serve so many purposes and it really can feed the world if we use it you know wisely and grow it accordingly as well but we make it from fresh i mean we you know we cut the pieces through um it's essentially sort of cooked off with spices um but i mean we do it quite easily but and there are so many ways that you can make it i mean i've made it at home in my um hot pot you know like an overnight kind of uh, process as well um it really depends what you want but we try and keep it very simple so that you can enjoy the flavor of it and the flavors that we're putting into it as well but extremely versatile um the jackfruit you know and and sri lanka is really blessed with so a plethora of fruit and vegetables that many people look at and think you know this is how we have to use it but i you know i think it's something that i'm quite passionate about you know to try and encourage you know the young people new cooks to look at vegetables and fruits in different ways and to to challenge the thinking of what they were grown up with and how we can use it wisely now as well for the future Yeah, I, I think um, uh, the new trend, I think, is to put as much color on your plate as you can. <laughs> yes. and it comes from from fruits and vegetables, right? So well, you eat with your eyes, don't you? Yeah. So, and and I think uh, 
in Sri Lanka, I, I mean, all the malungs, right? All the, the herbaceous sort of salads that people have. That's something I miss because it's hard to get here in, in Delhi. But, um, you know, the watercress salads and everything else. I mean, it's, so I think a lot of the food that we eat as a part of our, you know, cuisine, whether it's uh, whatever ethnic cuisine that we have. Yes. I naturally, I mean, if you take the, you know, if you take the shortcut that people seem to put dairy milk instead of coconut milk because it's sort of easily available. If you take that aspect of it out uh, and you really make the kiri bath with real coconut milk, that's a vegan. Um, hoppers are vegan, string hoppers are vegan. I mean, you know, pitus are vegan. I mean, so if you look at it, uh, rice is obviously, right? And then all the mm -hmm. crudy parts that go with it, uh, all the curries can, are basically vegan. So, I mean, if somebody wants to sort of eat mindfully on a Monday, and restrict themselves. It's not that much of a restriction. Like I would, I would do anything to have polos curry, polo sample, and a pari pu. I would be happy <laughs> as a clam, right? I could have that and string hoppers for dinner, and I'm good. I don't have to worry about anything. I can yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you've got it all. You've got it all to hand, uh, Lavi, here in this country. It, you know, it is extremely easy. Um, everything is versatile. It really is just educating people on how to use it um, and how to use it wisely. I mean, we do deep fry an awful lot, and we do have a lot of carbs on our plates as well. So, you know, it's trying to strip things back and make people appreciate and understand um, what we have available to us and and how we can use it wisely. And it's amazing. I mean, I I do get. I do tend to do a lot of the vegan um, bakes, uh, specialities, types of cakes and desserts and stuff. And people will come to me in not just vegans, but diabetics with various ailments, you know, they can't have this and they can't have that. Um, and it, I find it really challenging and exciting to be able to, you know, to say, OK, so what is it you're after? And they'll say cheesecake. <laughs> you know, right? And so you have to come up with, you know, a recipe and recreate it for them um, and to be able to give them that that choice, the opportunity to enjoy something really, um, like they're not missing out on anything. Well, I mean, Karthik and I decided to sort of showcase uh, the three of you for a variety of reasons. One was to inspire people to sort of adopt a, a, a plant-based uh, diet at least one day a week on a mindful Monday, as we're calling it. But also to actually, um, you know, you guys have been a little bit of you know, pioneers in sort of giving vegan options or plant-based options to diners and being food entrepreneurs yourselves. So we, we would like to encourage, I think I, you made the point in Ali that the country is an abundant resource for all kinds of fruits and vegetables, uh, some that are unheard of and some that are maybe yet to be discovered by others. I mean, we contain lots of nutrition and, and potential for other healthy alternatives. And uh, so it encouraged food entrepreneurs to sort of maybe get into the plant-based space um, as a sort of a, a future thing. If you're thinking of starting a business um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, think of a plant-based business uh, because all the raw ingredients ha actually exist in Sri Lanka. So you could actually easily, and there's a lot of technology now that can be brought to bear in terms of machines and things like that, and process all these things. Uh, we've been showcasing some of that on Pandemic Punditry. Uh, I mean, so the, 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 the three ways people make uh, alternative proteins today in the world are, is uh, obviously plants. Um, and, and that's, you know, various methods of extrusion and all that. Then there is cell, which Sri Lanka is probably not equipped to do, which is essentially mm -hmm. a lot of biotechnology around, you know, taking a cell of an animal and then making cruelty-free yeah. meat. And that's anyway, five, 10 years away from market in most countries also. And then the third one is fermentation, is that there's a lot of uh, fermentation uh, proteins coming out of fermentation. We had a couple of guests on the show that does that. Um, and then the, the, the fourth one, which is sort of also another science thing, is uh, what they call synthetic biology. And that's actually taking like ammonia and making protein out of it, right? So, you know, these byproducts of industrialization and making food, that's a very cutting edge, you know, uh, area of biology that uh, they're saying will be the sort of the next future technology wave. But so I think that, you know, Sri Lanka and two of those categories can do really well, which is a plant base, and I think in fermentation. So mushrooms to um, all the legumes you have and the millets and the grains. So uh, I'm looking forward to more entrepreneurs uh, to be, be featured from Sri Lanka. Um, I, I don't know about you, Kartika, but I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pretty hungry. Ushad's probably salivating in like. Uh, <laughs> Lucky guy over there. <laughs> <You get> that <laughs> <lead>. <laughs> uh, so, th I mean, thank you very much for joining us. I hope this was uh, a useful exercise. And maybe the, the three of you can collaborate amongst yourselves. I mean, that may be an <laughs> opportunity that we've made the deductions. Maybe you can help each other out as uh, fellow entrepreneurs. 
Uh, but thank you very much for sort of putting the plant-based uh, stuff on the map. Uh, so what Kartika and I will do is, as part of this whole Mindful Mondays, is we'll list your businesses. Uh, we're actually working with a, a global organization to do that. Um, we'll announce that uh, we're still in discussions with them. So there's a, a global organization that actually tracks all these um, food, uh, plant-based food options and vegetarian food options. And um, and so you can, you know, we'll make you, make sure you guys get listed on that if we if you do conclude our transaction with them. Um, so we're happy to promote you on our website and everything else. Uh, so if when people are looking for options, uh, that they can find you. Yeah. So all the very best from from my my end, uh, and thank you so much for uh, what you do. And we look forward to you know seeing better and bigger things from all three of you. Kathika. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody. Thank really you everybody. Thank Have a great Thank you for the opportunity to uh, be part of. This. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Take care, guys. Okay. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.